If you've been following me for a while, you might remember this bowl I made a while back. Uh, it's a Jarrah bowl with a Nerd inlay, that's the candy. Uh, but I never got around to finishing it because the cold jaws that I've got, which grab onto the edges to let me finish the underside, aren't quite big enough. So today I'm going to solve that by making a Longworth chuck. To make along with chuck, we're going to need to buy a few things that are going to be permanently attached to this chuck. First off is a face plate. This is a, I think, a four inch face plate. Uh, and this Iron Woodco modern Longworth button with hardware kit. Now you can make your own hardware kit, but these were pretty inexpensive. I picked these up from Pop Shed uh, and it saves a lot of hassle. So this hardware kit basically consists of a quarter inch bolt, a wing nut, some uh, washers uh, and the rubber stopper. Now this rubber stopper, you can buy them and then just drill them out yourself, but uh, drilling rubber is actually pretty annoying. Uh, we're also gonna need some plywood. I'm going to use that phenolic coated Baltic birch plywood. I would recommend a hardwood plywood because it'll just hold up a lot better and have fewer voids in between. Uh, from the tooling point of view, we're getting, I'm going to use my bandsaw and my circle cutting jig, which means I'll need to use a 5mm drill bit to create the pilot hole. Uh, and for the grooves, we're going to need to use a uh, router with a quarter inch bit to match the quarter inch bolts. So I've already found my center point. I just need to create a hole going uh, through so I can mount this on the bandsaw and I've double stick taped the two pieces of plywood together. Now my lathe can handle about 410 mil or 16 inches swing over the lathe. So I've got this set to 200 mil, which will give me a 400 mil diameter. Um, <coughs> And now I can rough cut my circle. So there's a couple of flat spots. Um, clearly I didn't get this centered well enough or my pin wasn't in quite the right position, but that's okay. And we need to take it to the lathe anyway, just to get it perfectly round. So for the first step, I'm actually gonna screw the two pieces together so that they're safe on the lathe. I'm just gonna use these center points here um, and put it in probably 10 mil from the center. I'll drill through one. Now that these two pieces are securely attached, we need to mount the faceplate. Using the lines I drew to find the center point, I can line up the holes in the uh, faceplate, the screw holes, until that looks like it's pretty even on all four sides. Now we can take this over the lathe and using the scraper we can trail up the surface. It goes without saying that you should be wearing safety equipment, primarily a face shield while doing this. I've got my lathe turned down to the slowest speed it'll go, which is a uh, shy under 600 RPM. Uh, I've got my <coughs> tool rest set up so that it clears. I'm just gonna use a scraper to slowly work away being very gentle to uh, take away the minimum amount of material to get this round. Now before I take the Longworth chuck blank, I suppose, off the lathe, I've advanced my tail stop and I've got a live center here with a point that I'm gonna to use to mark the exact center. So that's all locked down and I can just advance that. And there you go, we've got a nice point there which we can use to reference all our other marks off. Okay, so the chuck is off the lathe and the 
faceplate is off the chuck, we need to mark out from our center point a rough circle to sort of avoid. So this is a little bit larger than the faceplate and that's where the edge of our routing will go to. That way it's not going to be too weak around the center point. <coughs> Since we still have the screws on the back, uh, I'm going to measure how far they come in. At most they come in two centimeters. So I'm going to say 25 mil in from the center, which will be, uh, well, let's say 17 centimeters. So now we need to draw a circle halfway between these two lines. And this works out at, we'll say 10 centimeters. So we'll draw it at a five centimeter mark. So, <coughs> excuse me. And the final line, or final circle I should say, goes halfway between the middle line and the innermost line. All right, now we need to draw a few lines. Um, and this will go right through the center. And we need one 90 degrees to that line. Still need a few more segments, so we're going to divide that again. So uh, 45 degrees this time. What we need to do to get our arches is place the pivot point on the uh, third from the outside uh, circle, while the pin is in the first from the center circle. Then just draw out to where it connects with the outside line. Okay, so I've got my router with a quarter inch bit mounted onto a trammel base. This trammel base is just a piece of MDF with uh, holes drilled in it so the screws for the base plate can go in and a line down the centre uh, with a nail in it. Now that nail will drop into the holes where we had the uh, bow compass previously and that'll let me pivot the router along those lines. Now I want to route every second line all the way to the edges uh, that way it's going to re retain the most amount of strength possible. One very important detail I forgot was that we're going to need an axle or a pivot point right in the center. So that point we marked before, I need to drill out on through both of them so we can attach a bolt. I'm using a six millimeter drill bit because I've got a six millimeter bolt, an M6 bolt. But if you're metrically challenged, a quarter inch bolt will work just fine. All right, now we can detach these four, flip one side, attach the face plate and attach everything together. So these need to turn against each other and that creates the action that pulls everything in. So M6 bolt and a washer go through the hole we just drilled, another washer and then two nuts which will tighten against each other to make a lock nut. With the bolt in the middle and the face plate on the back, it's fairly trivial to mount these, uh, the stoppers. So we just align two of the holes, two of the slots, wash on either side, wing nut goes on, 
And you'll notice I've drilled out uh, with a force and a bit, a little thumb hole on both sides. You can see how that adjusts there. So I need to attach more of them. If it's a little bit uh, catchy, I can always sand the slots uh, to smooth things out. <clears throat> you might notice that I've now got bright bolts on instead of the ones that came with it. Uh, and that's purely my fault. Turns out I didn't quite route these grooves accurately enough. Um, they weren't quite the mirror image of each other. So unfortunately, they kind of jam a bit. So I've got two options. I can either, or three I suppose, I can either reroute them and make a new one, uh, sand these down, or for the time being, I can just replace it with M6 screws or bolts, which are, are a little bit skinnier, which, <coughs> Unfortunately, I've only got two of that are long enough at the moment. But you can see that this is easy enough to operate one-handed, in theory. <coughs> get that approximately sized first. And then I can really cinch that down and tighten the wing nuts at the back. Now obviously I'm not going to spin this, uh, turn it on to spin it, because that would be dangerous <coughs> with just the two uh, clamps there. Obviously with four or eight it would be very secure. Uh, so that's entirely on me. The theory was fine, just I think I was a little bit inaccurate marking out one or two and that ultimately resulted in something that didn't work out so great. However, this works. Uh, I'll get some bigger bolts tomorrow, I think, and uh, go from there. Thanks for watching.